Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has been on an epic tear lately. And as you may or may not know, I don't really like saying things negatively about the Prime Minister all the time because I don't see it as that productive. Just like when people say F Trump or F Trudeau, I don't really think it does anything good. But sometimes, when the Prime Minister says stuff like this, Looking at how every different decision can have an impact on uh, women in a positive or a negative way. Uh, even, you know, even big infrastructure projects. Uh, you might not say, oh, what does a gender lens have to do with building this new highway or this new uh, pipeline or something? Well, uh, you know, there are gender impacts. When you bring construction workers into a rural area, there are social impacts because uh, they're mostly male construction workers. How are you adjusting and adapting to those? That's what the gender lens in GBA plus budgeting is all about. These are all things that we've been doing not to be nice or to be better or to be moral, but to be smart about getting the very best out of all of our citizens and making the very best out of our economy because women entrepreneurs tend to make better choices. Combining that with everything else he says, it's almost as if he has some sort of disdain or at least doesn't care to mention anything about regular everyday Canadians. He recently pledged money seemingly over a tweet to a global education fund promoted by talk show host Trevor Noah. However, his government says that it was part of a G7 commitment to global education and was planned three weeks prior. Whether you believe that or not is not exactly the point. In fact, it's missing the point. The point is that, well, giving money all throughout the world constantly, you have to remember that he said something like this. And I'll quote it here. No veteran will be forced to fight their own government for the support and compensation they have earned. Um, yet you are still currently in a legal battle with veterans regarding equal support and compensation to their peers. on a couple of elements you brought up. First of all, uh, why are we still uh, fighting against certain uh, veterans groups in court? Uh, because uh, they are asking for more than we are able to give right now. Um, they are asking for more than we... Well, no, hang on. You're asking, you're asking for honest answer. So in addition for not having any money for the veterans, there's no money for homeless, there's no money for uh, carbon emissions, and there's no money to house the migrants that Justin Trudeau himself invited in. So it's like they're throwing millions of dollars around without a care in the world and not having any consistency on what they spend it on. You get 50 million. You get 50 million. I don't have any money in my pockets. You get 50 million. I'm sorry. You get free housing and better health care than everybody else. So in all this, he's found more ways to disconnect with regular Canadians. Now his best bud, Gerald Butts, has to be telling Trudeau. He has to be telling him he's been doing too well lately. He hasn't been saying anything that is not manly or feminist enough. Hammering a nail. We can't have that, Prime Minister Trudeau. Justin, you've begun to appear too manly. The 2015 and people kind comments were a good start, but we can do better, can't we? Um, your cabinet, you said, looks a lot like Canada. And I understand one of the priorities for you was to have a cabinet that was gender balanced. Why was that so important to you? Because it's 2015. <laughs> religious charitable organizations have in our legislation so that it can also be changed because maternal love 
is the love that's going to change the future of mankind. So we'd like you to look uh, we, we like to say people kind, not necessarily mankind, because uh, yeah. it's more inclusive. There we go, exactly. <laughs> yes, thank you. We can all learn from each other. Begin wearing silly socks to distract people from what you're actually talking about. Okay, didn't think you would actually do that, but perhaps this time you should dress incredibly silly and dance in a mocking manner, ridiculously insulting a very large trade partner. that? Alright, well, say that your high cheekbones prove that you are Asian and then say you do not take selfies only to take a selfie in front of a grave site of one of your ancestors. The Singaporean blood. It's, no, uh, no. it's uh, <laughs> just my high cheekbones and I tan dark. When he came face to face with the stones, the Prime Minister took a moment and a selfie. I actually never take selfies. Everyone else takes selfies. I don't take selfies. I lose everything. A video for his eldest son. Holy shit. All I ask is that while I'm wearing this liberal red is that if we don't have money for our own people, our own veterans, or our own homeless, or the people that we're bringing in, stop giving money away. We need to put money and investments into stuff in our own country first. Make us wealthy and rich, and then we can start being super generous. Until pipelines start being built, until veterans can get money, until the healthcare system uh, stops the incredible wait times and high prices, we need to start keeping the money for ourselves. So one of the things I like about Canada is we tend not to complain too much. We don't do any mass protests. Okay, we maybe do a couple disguised as different things that are actually about politics. But anyways, there's just a few people who do that. And generally in Canada, we wait for elections to happen to make our voices heard. And that's good. So what I say is, if you lose an election, don't go to the streets, don't start screaming, don't call the other people evil, even if you might really believe that they are. Just let them implement their policies, see if they work, and if you're not happy, vote them out the next time. We're very close to a 2019 election, and things may change drastically one way or the other depending on who wins. Now, if somebody asked me recently if I think Canada should do what France is doing in their yellow vest protest where they're against energy costs that are soaring and making it hard for them to live, I said no, because I don't think we're in such a dire situation. We don't have as high taxes, even though ours are pretty damn high. Damn it, I forgot about the taxes. We also don't have to deal with um, a lot of terrorism like they do. We don't have to deal with huge influx of migration that's completely changing the culture and their way of life. And of course, lowering wages for everybody else. So if you ask me, I don't think we're in such a dire situation where we need to massively take to the streets, demand our leaders step down, demand uh, a mass lowering of taxes and costs, and I don't think we need to start destroying things. Keep in mind, Emmanuel Macron's uh, approval rating is something like 19, low 20 percentage, where Trudeau's is in the 30s, he's still not number one. So not everybody has this disdain and pent up anxiety and emotion in Canada. We're just not, you know, that much of a reactionary population. So let me know in the comments, and I know this is way far in advance, I just want to know maybe if you're willing to share how you're thinking of voting in the next election. Are you hoping the Liberals turn it around and go more towards the center? Are you hoping that the sheer uh, conservatives are right where you want it? Or are you going in with Bernier on this and saying we need a conservative government going in? Now personally, I think you should consider a Prime Minister Shane McMahon. I know he's not a politician, I know he's not even Canadian, but he's done very well in business. And if you like Trudeau hammering a nail, and I mean you really like it, and I know that you do, and if you like Trudeau boxing, and I know that you do. <laughs>
then you're gonna like Prime Minister Shane McMahon. Imagine him doing these things at the House of Commons.